Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have seen a moment that the country and the people of Assam in particular have been waiting for for over four decades. Ladies and gentlemen, the most underreported story of the day. But the most significant news story of the day. Almost completely ignored by the Lutians media. Ladies and gentlemen, 90% of Ulfa, at one point of time, the most dreaded terrorist group of the Northeast, the largest terrorist group of the Northeast, has signed a peace deal with the government of India. What many people saw is completely impossible. Bringing Ulfa to the mainstream has actually happened. The Assam chief minister spoke to me earlier. He said the other 10% also with Paresh Borua is likely to turn over. Ladies and gentlemen, what a moment this is. What a moment this is. What an achievement for the country. Abrogation of 370 and 35A in Kashmir. And a historic, historic, historic peace deal. Between Ulfa, the government of Assam and the government of India. While the Lutians... Media will try and black out and dwarf the significance of this very historic moment. The fact today that 7,200 insurgents have given up arms, hardly reported in the Lutians media. The same media which said when Manipur was burning that the Modi government has destroyed the future of the Northeast. But today when the biggest peace agreement happens with the biggest terrorist group of the Northeast, the Lutians media does not want to let you know and I want you to ask why? Why ladies and gentlemen? Peace talks have been going on with the Ulfa for 4040 years. The Ulfa split in 2011, both factions are talking to the government of India. Is it a small matter? that this historic peace agreement has been signed. Ask anyone who covers conflict anywhere in India and they will tell you that the significance of today's historic peace agreement is nothing less than the abrogation of 35A and 370 in Kashmir in another part of the country. But they are not talking about it, neither. Neither is it a small feat that a group of once heavily armed terrorists are giving up the gun for the belief in the government. There is a paradigm shift that this indicates because from Kashmir to the Northeast, what is clear to me as day is that there is a certain amount of faith that even India's biggest cynics have. That even the Tukre Tukre gang in Kashmir today is talking about the last mile reaching the last person at the border under the Modi government. And with that stands testament to the Modi model. A hard approach on terrorism and a soft approach to win those who are willing to give up the gun to put India first. Ladies and gentlemen, a simple point I want to start with tonight. People say, why has the Lutians media lost the trust of the people of the country? Because of things like this. Because when there is something to truly celebrate that brings the country together, the Lutians media believes that by not letting you know about it, or downplaying it, they will downplay the significance. And therefore, at the start of this Friday evening, edition of the debate, the last debate of 2023, I request you all, please, everyone with your families and your children and parents and loved ones, please read up about terrorism that Northeast had been through. And ask yourself how important this development is and then ask yourself, why is it? Why is it? that only and only Republic is leading with this big story today. On my debate tonight, I will have with me a person called Sasha Dhar Chaudhary. He has been the, he has been the, a very critical member of this very, very key leader, if I may call him so, of the Ulfa, the terrorist group. So in a sense, he has been a terrorist for decades, once a dreaded man. And today, Having signed the peace agreement, he was at that press conference with Amit Shah and Himanta Biswa Sarma. 
he is actually coming into my studio and we'll have an opportunity to ask him why he is giving up the gun so we have himanta biswa sarma and sasha dar choudhury also called sasha of the ulfa on my program leading tonight debate number 1 not a debate really an introspection on this the historic peace deal that the government of india has signed with the ulfa <clears throat> and debate number 2 this evening by the way we have himanta biswa sarma talking about it and and on debate 2 tonight lalu prasad tried to backstab nitish nitish stabbed lalu back and these people are saying that they will run the country what a joke that's debate number 2 and ladies and gentlemen after 12 years of talks the insurgent group ulfa has finally borne fruit with the largest insurgent group in assam and the largest terrorist group in the northeast laying down arms as a historic peace deal has been signed assam chief minister himanta biswa sharma says more such peace deals are in the offing ladies and gentlemen this is significant not just for the northeastern part of the country but for the entire process of bringing the country together a very significant step forward towards national unity ladies and gentlemen this is what has happened then we'll debate 44 years of strife in assam comes to an end aaj bharat sarkar assam sarkar और यूनाइटेड लिबरेशन फ्रंट ऑफ असम उल्फा उसके बीच में जो ट्राइब पार्टी समझौता हुआ है इससे आसाम के सभी हथियारी ग्रुपों की बात को यहीं पर समाप्त करने में हमें सफलता मिल रही है ये आसाम और नॉर्थ ईस्ट की शांति के लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है Insurgent group Ulfa bids farewell to arms. Another Modi ki guarantee is coming close to fruition. Lambe samay tak Arm Forces Special Power Act aapsa North East ke anek rajyo mein raha hai. Lekin bite 8 saalon ke dauran sthayi shanti aur behtar kanun vyavastha lagu hone ke karan हमें आपसा को नॉर्थ ईस्ट के कई क्षेत्रों से हटा दिया है एट्थ मेजर पीस डील साइन बाय सेंटर इन नाइन इयर्स Starting from 2015, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given a massive outreach to bring in all the insurgents group of the Northeast into a settlement. First, they signed the Peace Pact, the framework agreement with the Nagas, followed by the Blue Refugee Agreement, then the Bodo Accord, bringing in peace in the tribal areas of Assam. With the signing, over 700 Ulfa Kada will enter the mainstream. 16-member Protox faction of Ulfa was led by Arbinda Rajkhoa. Even Paresh Barua, who was against talks, is positive towards the move. you see uh, we have uh, direct or indirect contact with varesh borua he also wanted that peace accord with the protoc faction of the alpha should be completed so that the next level discussion with him can be commenced the days is not far when we will be able to have varesh borua also in the table of negotiation i am confident and i am positive about all this Home Minister Shah says move will usher in Assam's golden era. Aaj Ulfa ke sath samjhota ho raha hai main manta hu ki pure North East aur vishesh kar kar Assam ke liye ek shanti ke naye yug ki shuruaat hone ja rahi hai. Main aaj Ulfa ke sabhi pratinidhi ko hriday se vishwas dilana chahta hu ki aapne jo bharosa Bharat Sarkar par rakha hai भारत सरकार के गृह मंत्रालय की ओर से आपकी मांग किए बगैर ही इस सारी चीजों को पूरी करने के लिए एक टाइम बाउंड मैनर में प्रोग्राम भी बनाया जाएगा और हम गृह मंत्रालय के अंतर्गत एक कमेटी भी बनाएंगे जो आसाम सरकार के साथ रहकर 
ये पूरे समझौते को पूरा करने का प्रयास करें समयबद्ध तरीके से पूरा सेंटर इज वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स मेकिंग द नॉर्थ ईस्ट अ ड्राइवर ऑफ ग्रोथ हमारी सरकार ने नॉर्थ ईस्ट के विकास को पहली प्राथमिकता दी है पिछले नौ वर्षों में लाखों करोड़ रुपए नॉर्थ ईस्ट के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर हमने लगाए आज आधुनिक हाईवे आधुनिक रेलवे ये नॉर्थ ईस्ट की पहचान बन रही है पहली बार नॉर्थ ईस्ट में वंदे भारत जैसी आधुनिक ट्रेन चली है पहली बार अरुणाचल प्रदेश में ग्रीन एयरपोर्ट बना है पहली बार अरुणाचल में सिक्किम जैसे राज्य एयर कनेक्टिविटी से जुड़ा है वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट इंसर्जेंसी ग्रुप्स इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट हैज गिवन अप ऑन आर्म्स विद टॉक्स ऑन विद मेनी अदर ग्रुप्स टू डू द सेम इज द ड्रीम ऑफ इंसर्जेंसी फ्री नॉर्थ ईस्ट अनदर गारंटी दैट विल सून बी फुलफिल्ड लेट्स डिबेट biggest stories of the day in fact i would say the top headline of the day uh, has been the historic agreement between the ulfa the assam government and the central government the ulfa has been an insurgent group operating out of assam with bases outside assam for many many years in fact decades very few people expected that there would be a comprehensive peace agreement with the ulfa that would be possible which would include the most important names in the ulfa leadership so i personally think this is a huge moment and joining me is himanta bishwa sharma the chief minister of assam who has been very instrumental in putting together what i can only call as someone from assam a historic agreement which will pave the way for a new chapter in the development of assam and the future of assam and in fact the future of the entire northeast mr himanta biswa sharma many many congratulations this was this was uh, not expected thank you so much it's a wonderful <clears throat> new year eve present that you have given to the people of assam and to the people of the country so firstly could you explain the significance of this agreement and do you have the broad consensus of the entire ulfa leadership while while uh, while negotiating this agreement arnab uh, as you are from assam you know that alpha agitation started in 1987 since then 4800 innocent people lost their life at the hands of alpha 2160 alpha cadre were killed either in encounter or in the uh, clashes amongst them thirdly more than 700 security personnel martyred during this entire period 2500 plus people were kidnapped and whereabouts of many of those people are still not known in addition to that many assamese youth has lost their life in myanmar and bangladesh in the jungle of myanmar and bangladesh so almost 10000 people lost their life in either side of the fence in that background when all the founding members of the of alpha including its chairman Arvind Rajkumar came and signed a peace accord with the government of India. It is a big news for the people of Assam and for the people of North East. This will accelerate it a further the process of peace and process of tranquility. In 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi started this mission of mainstreaming North East with the mainland India. Today, I can see. that this historic day today is a historic day and this fulfill prime minister's ambition of mainstreaming north east with the uh, mainland of india to a large extent i'd like to thanks honorable prime minister for his vision and the way home minister amit sha navigated the entire peace process i'd like to thanks i'd like to offer 
gratitude to both of them on behalf of the people of Assam. Today is a historic day as far as Assam is concerned. Absolutely historic day, no doubt about it. Would also like to share with the viewers that these Ulfa and Central talks have been going on for more than 35 years. And so there is a very, you know, I mean, I cannot uh, understate this. This is a huge achievement. However, Mr. <clears throat> Himanto Biswa Sarma, you had all the major leaders of Ulfa, Aurobindo Rajkua, you had Sasha Dar Chaudhary, Sasha, you had Anup Chetia, all there at the signing of this agreement. But the Ulfa had split into two groups in 2011. There is still the other faction, which is of Poresh Borua. What is your message to the, to the uh, original Ulfa chief, Poresh Borua? What is your message to him? What happens to the other faction, which is anti-tox? Uh, you see, uh, we have uh, direct or indirect contact with Vares Borua. He also wanted that peace accord with the Protoc faction of the Alpha should be completed so that the next level discussion with him can be commenced. So, in a way, you can <coughs> presume that this accord will also pave the way for a further discussion with Mr. Pores Borua. But 90% of the Alpha has signed peace accord today. <coughs> I am sure that the way Prime Minister Narendra Modi is working for the Northeast, the way, the way Home Minister Amit Shah is working for the Northeast, the days is not far when we will be able to have Pores Borua also in the table of negotiation. I am confident and I am positive about all this. <clears throat> well, that's a very, very important statement from you that Poresh Barua is also in a way in on this agreement and is likely to follow. I think that's breaking news that the Assam Chief Minister said Poresh Barua is very much for the peace deal and is likely to follow. Uh, Interesting point you I'll, made there, Mr. I'll, Sharma. I'll, I'll, the biggest uh, challenge up, for the people of Assam. Arnab, 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 I'll. Yes. Arnab, I'll, I'll just uh, re redo my word so that it doesn't carry a wrong message. What Pores Borua has indicated that you first do an accord with the Proto Alpha, then I'll look at the accord and I'll take my step and I'll positive towards the development. So that was the message we have and I am sure that because of this act, this accord, we will be able to negotiate with Pores Borua faction also in days to come. Well, that's tremendous. <clears throat> uh, that's tremendous. One of the biggest, uh, biggest <clears throat> demands of the Ulfa has been about protecting the indigenous Assamese identity and the identity of many of the major <coughs> communities of Assam, Tai Ahom, Rajbongshi, Koch Rajbongshi, Sutia, T tribes. So the question is that, have you ensured that? Because the big concern in Assam has been the demography. That, you know, the Congress government just allowed the Bangladeshis to take over Assam. Ah. I know you've been trying to control things. But what does this agreement do for the indigenous Assamese-speaking people of Assam? <clears throat> you see, uh, a few months back, Assam see a silent revelation. Many people in media we have not discussed, but Assam has seen a silent revelation when in the post delimitation we found that out of 126 assembly constituency, 105 constituencies has been protected for the indigenous people of Assam. Now, in this accord goes to say that for further delimitation, you have to adopt the same principle, the principle which has been adopted in the latest delimitation. And this single point, if this single point government of India has agreed, and this will ensure 
that the political rights of the Assamese people will be maintained for a long time to come. The second most important thing in this accord that you know that in Assam the system is that in after change of demography in one assembly constituency, people started slowly moving out to the next assembly constituency, nearby assembly constituency and then they change the demography of that constituency also in a very scientific way. Now this accord has put a block that you cannot ordinarily goes from one constituency to other constituency and register yourself as a voter unless you have a solid ground like landed property etc in the other assembly constituency. So Assam is a basically what happened in Assam a scientific <coughs> demographic invasion. So this accord has put a hold on that. Now you cannot have this scientific demographic invasion. Today Prime Home Minister also met the six community which you are referring to or he in a lighter when he, he told them ki agle bar tumara bari hai. Matlab he has assured them ki in the next round the, the only pending problem in Assam is the uh, tribal status to that six community which he said that we are going to address also. Right. In this accord also there are talk of lot of changing uh, land revenue administration so that we can protect the rights of indigenous people. So there are lot of discussion about the riverine area, <coughs> how we are going to protect our shore area. So yeah. there are lot of good things in this accord which will protect indigenous people. Yeah. Well, that's 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 a very important point. And uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Himanto Bishwa Sharma, in, the after in addition, the Arnab, recent situation with yes, uh, Arnab. Also, there is a, another good news uh, that this accord has says that there will be investment of 1.5 lakhs crores in Assam in next few years. That's huge amount so far as Assam is concerned. Yes, absolutely. Well, well <clears throat> of course, the, the economy of Assam has been on the upswing. Uh, domestic and external investment has been growing up, uh, has been growing uh, rapidly. And, uh, and no doubt the law and order situation is fundamental to improving the economy of any state, whether it's Uttar Pradesh, as Yogi is doing, or Assam, as Himanta Biswa Sarma is doing. Uh, Mr. Mr. Himanto Biswa Sarma, after the Manipur situation, you know, there was great concern about whether China will take advantage of this, of this, uh, of, of, of any law and order problems. And Ulfa had a presence in Bangladesh, Bhutan and Myanmar. And they have received training from China and also from Pakistan. So uh, my question is twofold and that's my last question. Uh, will this accord lead to a more long lasting peace or possibly a model? that can be implemented with the factional groups like the NSCN and their factions or with even uh, tribal communities who are at war with each other like in Manipur, what, you know, across the Northeast, for example. Uh, Arnab, I'll tell you that Home Minister Amit Shah has lined up few more agreements for the other states of the Northeast region. There are, as you know, there are many, many issues, many, many conflict situation among the community, among the states, um, uh, within the states. You know that how complicated Northeast is. With signing this accord now, Assam will be total peace. Last three years, Assam has not seen any incident, totally peaceful state. And this accord will further, further strengthen the peace and tranquility. Now, Assam is also witnessing an unprecedented economic development. And I am sure that other northeastern states are also now looking at Assam, how Assam is changing. And there are definite realization in the northeastern region that this is the best time for us. We must work with the Narendra Modi government 
and resolve and settle our disputes. Of course, Manipur was a setback, but now Manipur is also limping back to normalcy and you will see that whether it is an inter-community conflict, inter-state conflict or the conflict within the state, North is now on a way of resolving all these things. There will be new North East, I am sure. But as far as my state is concerned, Assam is concerned, your state Assam is concerned, now we are completely out of militancy. We have resolved almost all the conflict tri uh, among the tribals or tribal, non-tribal, Bodoland movement, separate state movement, everything has been resolved. Now with this Alpha Accord, Assam will see a permanent peace and tranquility. Well, well, Mr. Mr. Sharma, I can, I would like to congratulate you once again for this historic achievement. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, after 40 years, ladies and gentlemen, 40 years of conflict, a historic agreement between the Assam government, the central government and Ulfa. Uh, and this could be the moment of change. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharma. Thank you very, very much for joining us uh, this evening. Thank, Thank you, you and congratulations. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not, it's not every day that you call someone into your studio who has been one of the most dreaded terrorists of the most dreaded terrorist group in the country. And I hope you don't mind it, Sashadar, Sashadar Chaudhary also known as Sasha, joined the Ulfa in 1984 when he was still a teenager. Between 1984 and 2009, he was very, very actively involved in the top leadership of the Ulfa. Not only was he a dreaded terrorist leader, he called himself the Foreign Secretary of the Ulfa and picked up the gun and led a many decade long insurgency against India with his aspiration to make Assam free. Today, Sashadhar Chaudhary comes straight from the Home Ministry to my studio where he has signed a historic peace agreement in the presence of Mr. Amit Shah and the Assam Chief Minister, Himanta Biswa Sarma. And let me begin by saying today, Sashada, that I am glad. I am glad as an Indian and as an Assamese today Thank you. about this peace agreement. Thank you. And I am glad that you have given up the gun and you are coming into the mainstream. Sure. Before we take the conversation forward, what is the basis of this peace agreement and why are you coming back to the mainstream after having been uh, you know underground having picked up the gun against the country what has made you change your mind what has made the ulfa leaders like you aurobindo rajkwa anup chetia change your mind no no basic position is the time and the history attached with the time uh, in conclusion, I cannot say in a single word why we have given up arms and why I have come to a conclusion. First, you have to go why we have taken up arms. Then this your answer will come up. It has happened just after the in a wake of Assam movement. Day by day, innocent students, innocent peoples were killed in the, who were involved in this very non-violent movement at the time. And we were very teenager. Laugh to the national was there, and to some extent, what you say, um, it's a young age we were, and at that time, this proposition has come up, the joining Ulfa. That means take up arms, because everything has happened in the haste of the central government, and at that, at that time, the state government. Uh, that both were also at that time the whole Indian government, same government. 850 people have laid their life only because they are involved in a very for a very just cause and non-violently. So we thought that non-violent movement would not give us anything. 
ইন্ডিয়া No, so I, I want to understand this. Uh, Sasha, did you at any point of time take direct or indirect help of the Chinese to wage war against India? No, 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 no. It's a, basically it is stated that direct or indirect. Ulfa has, what Ulfa has to, uh, taken help from India. Uh, it is basically from the neighboring countries. Which they, neighboring countries? They see Bhutan, Bangladesh, etc. But not with the government. In the low level connection, they have made contact and they stayed there in the, basically in the jungle. In the Bhutan also, they stayed in the jungle, in Bangladesh also, in the hill tracks or in the sideways, in the border areas, they stayed there. How did you move between Bangladesh and Bhutan and Myanmar? Where was your base? No, my, it is conditional with the fake travel documents we have made and so. At that time, you had fake documents? Fake documents. Alpha so what, what were the fake documents that you were carrying? No, that is fake passport and etc. Fake Indian passport? No, 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 fake. Yes, fake Indian passport also at a time. You had fake been. Indian passport? Fake Indian passport, fake Bangladeshi passport, fake Myanmar passport, fake Brazilian passport. We have collected... You had a fake Brazilian passport, passport as also. well? Also, Myanmar passport also, anyhow. And what is the kind of, uh, sort of, what is the kind of arms... Yes, arms for the smugglers, alpha, it is no alpha, anyhow, anyway, arms markets are there in the world. It is a, it's a very untold story, but everybody knows it. Where, <coughs> where were these arms markets where you were procuring the arms from? In many countries, I don't want to divulge all these things. What kind of arms is. were you picking up? No, all types of arms, alpha, I have taken up at the time, all types of small arms, particularly infantry related arms, hmm. I can see. And you were there for two thousand till two thousand and nine. No, you said I you wa- said at one time. I, I was I was arrested twice. At one eighteen nineteen eighty six first. Then I was in jail for two and a half years. Then, then I went to Kashinland. Then I returned. I I I I I want to understand this. You were arrested when you were very young. You were released, and then you went back to Myanmar and you joined the Ulfa. Again. Did you ever think that you were on the wrong path against your own no, country? No, 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 no. That situation has come up now. At that time, they thought that we thought that it is the only path. Only path to anyhow to fight for the justice. Situation has been changed. Time has been changed. Assam has been changed. As a whole, India has been changed. You cannot think today's India, today's Assam, and yesterday's, yesterday's, yesterday's Assam. It's a very different. Very different. So at that time, time was that, that we have no other ways. We have no other ways but to fight for the justice. So we are a low-contracting party. So the guerrilla war, what happened, that happens. What's your biggest regret in this period? In 2009, viewers, in 2009, the gentleman sitting next to me, Sasha <coughs> Chaudhary, very interesting story. He is eloquent. He speaks many languages. And he's been the foreign secretary of Ulfa. Before that... You, you went around saying that you will die, but you will not surrender. Yes, he said, he said at, at that point of time, viewers, this person who is very amiable, looks like a very peaceful, genial man, uh, was considered one of the most dangerous faces of the Ulfa. And he made a statement at that time that I will mori jam kintu moi surrender no koru in Assamese, which means I will die, but not surrender. Surely. Did you surrender in 
Suddenly on one day, in, you were in Dhaka in 2009, you were picked up by unidentified people and you were brought to the border where you were picked up by the BSF, right, and taken into custody on charges of terrorism. What is the real story? Did you sign some kind of understanding with the Indian government at no, that time no, to surrender? No, no, no. Did you surrender? No, 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 never. I am telling you the story that all these Ulfa personnel, not only Ulfa personnel, Ulfa leaders know, uh, this is other the Manipuri, this Maitai groups are there, Bodos are there, Tripuris are there, all the leaders were arrested. Because this uh, government has come up there, in, they have very good relations, diplomatic relations has come up. And all of you were in Bangladesh? Yes, we were in Bangladesh. Why were you in Bangladesh? <coughs> other places where you will go. There is no other places in Assam, is a land of country. To no, go but outside. when you go to Bangladesh, were you getting protection from the Bangladesh government? No, no, no. We are in a You were in hiding? Hiding, yeah. Everywhere you have to hide. When you are, a, we are fighting against India, you have to hide. Because Why did you choose to go to Dhaka? Why were you not in the jungles <coughs> with your forces? Why were you in Dhaka? No, no, no. When we are going to somewhere else, you have to go to somewhere else, you have to go to Dhaka, no? So why do you have to go to somewhere else? Because to propagate against India, propagate my causes, so... Propagate with whom against India, Sasha? No, in this moment, I am not ready to tell you all these things because... It's you must tell me as much as you can share, no, we must. Basically why are you not ready to tell have, me? We have done to even, um, it is Geneva also. At that time. How did you travel to Geneva? As a, yeah, as a wanted terrorist leader, how did you go to Geneva? No, with a fake passport, we traveled anyhow. It's a very different mindset. You just took a fake passport and went to Geneva? Yes. We have Geneva, we have given deliberation there also in Geneva in two, three... Were you no, getting no. direct or indirect support from any other government? Uh, you can open up with me, there is no, no problem. No, sir, I am not telling you, no. Direct or indirect, I don't want to say, but at that time, Anyhow, when we are going to Geneva, when we have got some uh, ways and means to uh, give any deliberation in uh, UN, there must have to be some hidden support from somewhere else. Hidden, I am telling you. There must be but, some hidden but, support but from somewhere else. Nobody is open to Ulfa. Nobody is open to Ulfa. Nobody has open to Ulfa. Anyhow, we got there, we got some Where is the hidden support from? Because you cannot even understand that somebody is supporting you. Because no country, you to no country will support you? you against India in, the, in this very world. No country will support, will support you, against you directly against the, uh, China. Will no, no, China is not helping anybody else. Is. Whom China is helping? It is a status story. There has been this charge. Can I ask you this question directly? What there has been, there has been, it has been speculated that China was supporting Ulfa. No, no, it's a, it, I don't believe it. Basically. Basically, it is stated because all arms and ammunition which has been uh, travelled to Assam, those are the Chinese arms. So, how did the Chinese yes, arms come to you? Everywhere you will get it. How did, a, how did, how did Chinese <coughs> arms come to you? So many smugglers in the world who will provide you all these things. You and got the arms from the smugglers? Absolutely. All insurgent groups got arms from the smugglers. But where were the smugglers getting the arms from? I don't know, sir. How can you say it, you don't it, know? Is, it is not, not my duty and you cannot go there in also. Our needs Was is China there. indirectly routing the arms to you through smugglers? I don't think so. Not indirectly routing because we have we have bought all these arms. If China would have given arms, then this time also China would have given arms to anybody else. To many people, Naga is not they are not giving. You see. Nagas are fragmented because Naga, Naga has gone to China and um, what's called they failed to enter China last time also. And 1986. You and must have worked with and directly or indirectly with almost all the major terrorist groups in the Northeast. <coughs> yes. Am I right? I am. I am. I am contradicting with you. I don't believe that they are terrorist group because. Of course, they are terrorist groups. No, I don't believe it. Of so, course, man. they are terrorist. Groups. I don't believe it. Too. You can well, say, but I. They, don't they it use so, terror. They, the idea is to <coughs> use uh, weapons to undermine the state. So no, no, man. undermine the state means why you have taken up, you must have to go there. Yeah, that is an argument that is can not, be put by any terrorist group. Yes, when you are killing 850 people who are agitating in the street in a Gandhian ways, then you are not going to make it yourself as a terrorist. And how many people did Ulfa kill? It's a, it's a collateral damage happens. But that, then a, you are justifying it, the same argument can be put, but then if every individual <laughs> who is aggrieved in the... Any person who has Today, a grievance in India picks up guns against the state, that is an act of terrorism. No. Yes, it may be an act of terrorism, but will be not his, in case of notice, no, I am not telling it so, because you know that uh, what about the notice, what it was at the time. You are telling it from a studio of Noida. You have seen Delhi now. You have seen Assam now. 
But have you seen that time, Assam, in 1983, 1982? The Nagas at the time, the Mijos at the time. But then what good did all of this do? Position, condition is that, that we have what taken up... What good did all of this do? No, what sir. Good I, did am, the violence I am do? telling you one thing. We have taken up arms in uh, 1979, uh, when uh, it is stated. But actually, uh, the working condition has come up from 1983. So were you in touch with other terrorist groups in the mm -hmm. North East? Are, it, was, it was said, see, Sasha, that now that you are in my studio, yes, surely. you will have to open up. Surely open, so my question, no, no. my question is, my question is, it was said, it was said that the Ulfa, of which you were a top leader, was really the controlling terrorist group, controlling all the other terrorist groups in the North. It's true or false? No, 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 sir. It is not controlling. How can it be controlled? Not controlled, but in direct liaison. It is not possible. Working with. We have we have a relation liaison with the other group, basically with the Bodos and so. These are our neighboring brothers. We have liaison, but how can you control? Did them? you coordinate uh, <coughs> acts of violence? Tried. Alpha has tried so many times to make coordination, but I don't think it was materialized. It was not materialized. You wanted to coordinate to carry yes, out. Tried, surely. So what was your intention? What was the intention? No, to make an umbrella. Umbrella of what? Uh, of all these uh, groups, no. Umbrella of all the terrorist groups. I am, please, please, rectify this. Those are not terrorist groups. No, I will terrorist continue to group, use the word terrorist India group. cannot talk with any terrorist group. It is not a principle, narrative principle of government of India. Government of India is talking with the, uh, with, the with all these groups who, who are coming to the mainstream. Or yeah, who but are government the, of India will talk to anyone who respects the Media can the constitution say, you are a media person, man. You can say anything else. Is. But you are know, saying does not mean that we are terrorist groups. Even when American, it is doctrine has come up. This is again terrorism and so. Then also, Ulfa was not regarded as terrorist group. No, never. That, that is a question of perspective. That <coughs> no, is, no, that no. is a question of perspective. No, 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 no. no. Perspective no. means what? Perspective that means, means perspective that means also, that if you have a, if you have a, <coughs> if you are seeking a political solution to an issue and you pick up the gun, then the question is very, very simple. That it is a terrorist group. Now, my my question, my question is. I am not agreed with you. You have to come with my terms. Otherwise, your question will be to a terrorist man. No, I, I, am I will not come on your No, terms. man, with a terrorist, it is uh, my even a home minister of India and it is... No, can a, can a person who is watching you tonight, uh, Sashadar Chaudhary, who is watching you tonight, and a lot of people are watching you yeah, sure, on yeah. this program, after all these years, what really was achieved? Yes. What was achieved My by choosing question. the path of violence? Hundred percent, I'm going to What was answer. achieved but with harsh? You have to say that Ulfa is not a terrorist group. I will. I will not say that Ulfa is not a terrorist group for the reason that we can have a difference of perspective on it, because I am also an Assamese and you are an Assamese, and you know where you come from uh, is very close to where our family village is. So, but two people from the same state. Can have a difference of opinion, Maybe and, and that is what. It is, it yeah. So we have a difference of opinion on this. I am happy. I began by saying that you've given up the gun, because I can tell you this. I can tell you this, Sasha. I can tell you this, Sasha. That there was a point of time when I know there was a lot of anger in Assam, but I do not believe that the resolution to any issue, including a change of demography, including a challenge to the Assamese identity, can be picking up the gun. Because there's no end to the cycle of violence. And my worry is that somebody outside will take <coughs> advantage of that. Anyway, let me come back to the present. You said at one time that you will never surrender. Did you surrender? No, I'm In I'm 2009? Yes, that context was different. That context was different. This context is different. Today, we have signed an accord. Then we have to abandon violence. We have to give up arms. And in the time of ceasefire accord, we have stated that we, we are going to make an accord. When you, when you gave up the gun, when you gave up arms... Within 15 days of this very uh, signing? Did you, did you think at that point of time that your life would be in danger if you come back to Assam? No, Assam's. gun is not in our hand, man. On 2009, we have locked it up with the government of Assam and government no, but of is, was your life in danger because there's another Why? group of Ulfa which is not... We talking. don't believe so. Other, we, with other group of Ulfa, we don't have any enmity. You have an enmity with Parish Barwa. No, what You enmity? have differences with him. No, differences are there. Where is Parish Barwa now? I cannot say. How can I say, man? He Does he want to come back? In your he will not say me that where I am. When was the last time you spoke? <coughs> it is seven, eight years before. Seven, eight years back. What was the discussion about? 
viewers, no. the person we are talking about Either. is the Ulfa Commander in Chief <clears throat> Parish Barua, and I am asking him whether, uh, because Parish Barua is not yet part of the peace talks. Yeah. Do you think he can be? Today, Chief Minister has assured the people of Assam as well people of India that he is, he, is, he has contacts, and very definitely, very precisely, is saying that he is coming up. Uh, to, to, all the, to all the terrorist groups, sorry, I'll call them terrorist groups, you may not, but to all the groups who've taken up the gun against India, <clears throat> including in the Northeast, and there are so many of them, what is your message to them on a day when you have signed such a historic... My piece? message is that, my message is very clear. And especially <laughs> yes. to any youngster. Yes, I am... Like my you, message were you were an 18, 19-year-old when you picked up the gun? This is not the era of taking up, taking, up, taking up arms and to fight India now. You will not get anything else now. Now, India is a very mature state. It is raining near about, I am telling you, this is south, global south now, raining. And its hand is going on to the global north also slowly, what I have understood. Already global south is in the India. And it's a very mature state. That much I am saying, I am not going to the depth. What I do understand. So I asked anyone else that this is not the way now. Maybe later on, maybe, and it was past, it was okay to some extent for us. We, do be, we did believe it, but now not. We have to do for ourselves, we have to do for the nation as that's a whole. Significant. That is, that's that significant. Is for, yeah. Well, that's, that's significant. So the <laughs> last message on this program from Sasha Chaudhary on the sign, he's, the day he signs the peace deal, and I hope the message goes to all those who have picked up the gun or have picked up the gun or, uh, you know, even are thinking in that direction. Sacha Chaudhary says this is not the era. This is not the era to pick up the gun. The future is India's. I thank you very much for the openness with which you have come today. And I congratulate you on the peace deal that you've signed with the government of Assam. Everything is okay or not. I thank you for giving me this space to say something. And a little bit. I am embarrassed that when you are saying I was terrorist and something else, but I'll tell you the last no, That's a question of perspective. That's yeah. a question of perspective. We don't need to agree. But as long as we all work in the national interest. And I ask you, and I'm very happy for you also that you are doing something else, such type of an organization, institution, you have developed on your own. And hope you will do something as for Assam also. Thank you very much. That's Sashadar Chaudhary, ladies and gentlemen, on the other side tonight.